Hi, Dr. Sassy here from the Continent Center. So if you find solutions for bowel leakage or bladder leakage, that is urinary incontinence or fecal incontinence, what's the difference between solutions that might be something requiring ongoing therapy all the time that you have to continue to do and something that might be in an ideal world a treatment that you can then set it and forget it. Um, obviously the latter would be preferable if that were available and I think we're getting closer and closer to that kind of thing being available. Let me describe a little bit more what I mean. Right now most of the people who seek some help with bladder leakage or with bowel leakage uh, are told about a couple of avenues. One is medication therapy and as I've said before, what you see is a huge amount of investment in advertising and marketing, but not very successful investment in actually helpful medi medical therapy, medications that actually solve bowel or bladder leakage. The, cl the main class of medications that are available today um, are not very effective and they have significant side effects, uh, particularly of cognitive and memory problems, especially in people over 50, which is most of who uh, has this problem and even AARP has come out against those medications. The two newer medications uh, have some overlap there because they too hit those same receptors to some degree and cause dry mouth and similar side effects. They do seem to work a little bit better but in our vast experience here it's extremely rare that someone tells me those medications have solved the problem for them so we're really dealing with something with a very low success rate and it's something you have to take every single day in order to maintain even that low effectiveness. So that's really not where we would like to be ultimately. Um, we are big advocates of exercise plus modern technology. So exercise is something that would be an ongoing thing th in a therapy, but we think exercise is so good for us that we should be doing it every day anyway. So that one's kind of its own special category. Additionally, there are treatments that require repetitive therapies. A couple of examples are uh, Botox injections into the detrusor muscle in the bladder. And this is something that, uh, based on what you read, you might hear will last many months, sometimes six months or nine months. In practice, many people report that it lasts a lot less time than that, perhaps a few months, two months, three months. Um, I've heard answers all over the board from our patients. Um, and then it wears off and one can go repeat that. Uh, additionally, there is um, tibial nerve stimulation, which is a treatment which also has to be repeated quite frequently. And so these are ongoing treatments uh, with moderate success to low success. Um, the closest thing that uh, we have to a set it and forget it permanent solution would be one, if there were a surgery that really worked and then worked forever. Uh, we'd like to think that as surgeons we are able to repair the pelvic floor in a way that will be permanently durable and solve bowel and bladder leakage. The truth unfortunately is um, not that good. Um, for uh, the procedures that we perform across the pelvic floor, the results are actually fairly disappointing and they are not as durable as we would like. Uh, this includes bladder suspension procedures, mesh procedures, mesh slings, rectal and pelvic organ prolapse procedures. Um, when they're necessary, uh, then they must be done and we try for the maximum durability. And in some patients, they do last forever, but they're not very good at solving continence and having that continence be a durable, uh, effective result that lasts forever. Most of the time it deteriorates and we're left back to the question of what to do next. So surgery has not quite lived up to that uh, idea at all either. Um, Additionally, there are injectable fillers that can be used uh, in the uh, periurethral tissues or in the perirectal tissues. Um, and these do last for quite a while. In some cases, they may last a year or in some cases two years or three years or maybe just six months and then they can be repeated. Uh, so again, not quite perfect, but often helpful. And then lastly, the treatment that we view as kind of the cornerstone treatment, which has the highest success rate and is also the lowest invasiveness for the highest success rate uh, would be sacral neuromodulation, which is basically the implantation of a very small pacemaker-like device. And this uses modern computing technology to send a gentle programmed current to the pelvic floor to switch back on our pelvic floor nerves and muscles. Now that is not perfect either because uh, the device has to stay charged in some fashion, right? So uh, we're getting closer with longer lasting uh, devices that don't require any recharge at all. So
So there's uh, available on the market now, some that may last three or four or five years. Very soon to come will be devices that last quite a bit longer, maybe even eight to 10 years. And that is the closest thing we have. That could be a 20 minute procedure that is set, set it and forget it, and it is working in the background silently, unnoticeably, and it has switched on and continues to create effectiveness of the pelvic floor and the musculature so that there is no leakage in the bowel or the bladder. Um, that's probably the, the best result that we're going to get in terms of a set it and forget it solution. One step short of that are the currently very long lasting but rechargeable devices that perhaps once every two weeks at home while you're watching a TV program, you take a wireless charger like you might charge your uh, uh, phone, some like a Samsung phone that has wireless charging and you don't even have to plug it in, you just have to get it near it. So you take a charging pad and you just hold it adjacent to the uh, device and you might let it sit there for half an hour while you watch a TV program once a, every couple weeks or once a month in some cases. Um, so that's pretty close to what we're aiming for. Ultimately, um, we are striving for a solution that is going to be something that can be placed and set and programmed perfectly and then the person doesn't have to worry about it at all. And we're pretty darn close to that with the longer lasting um, uh, sacral neuromodulation devices, uh, so we're getting there. But I would say even today, th those solutions are far better, far lower maintenance uh, and have very little that someone has to do ever on a day-to-day -day basis um, than taking medications every day or going in repeatedly to a provider for visits or procedures um, this would definitely be uh, way superior in that, in that realm of how much maintenance and repetitive treatment is required. Um, okay, I hope that's been helpful in kind of framing the treatments in terms of how much uh, ongoing maintenance and effort uh, and appointments and doctor visits are required. And you can see why it's one more reason why we view sacral neuromodulation as the cornerstone therapy for bowel and bladder incontinence. All right, that's been Dr. Sassy here at the Sassy Surgical Continent Center, and I wish you the very best of health.